In this tutorial, we will be covering the 2D Stroke Motion Path feature. So first off, start a new title layout. Now import one of the globes. You can find these by clicking the Timeline Library tab and then navigating to the movie header. Once you've made your choice, double click your selection and it will be applied to the layout. Once the globe is on the edit screen, hold the shift key and drag one of the edges to enlarge it. And then press the C key to center it. Click the Timeline Library tab to return to the Timeline function. Drag the green movie layer out until it has two full instances. Or change the repeat value to 2. Now that the globe is in position, create a title. Once you have the word typed, click the escape key to select the title and then the C key to center it. Go to the timeline and drag the end of the title out to match the length of the movie. So that we'll have extra title tracks in the project, copy this title and paste it three times. You do this by right clicking the title on the edit screen and selecting copy from the panel. Right click the title again and click paste in the panel. You will need to do the paste procedure three times. Return to the timeline panel and turn the visibility off on all but one of the title tracks. You do this by clicking the eyeball icon on the far left of each track. Now either press F10 or click the button at the lower right hand corner of the edit screen. This will change us from graphic editing to effect editing mode. You can select the title by clicking the text track in the timeline panel. Now that the housekeeping is out of the way, let's draw some paths. If you want the title to circle the globe on a frontal plate, you have three options. You could draw your path freehand, draw it using the Bezier Curves Path option, or use the Create Ellipse Path option. Let's draw a freehand path first. Go to the panel header and find the icon that looks like a pencil. Select the freehand option from the Create Freehand Path drop-down and then bring your cursor to the screen and draw any path that you would want the title to follow. When you are finished drawing, right-click anywhere on the edit screen to activate the path. Scrub the clip. Turn the visibility off on this track and turn on the visibility for the next title track. Now let's make a path using the Bezier Curve option. Go to the header again and from the drop down menu select the Bezier Curve option. With the Bezier Curve option you can draw your path one of three ways. If you use the true Bezier Curves your line segments will have adjustment handles. Right click on the edit screen to activate the path. Scrub this clip. The second option is the easiest. All you have to do is place points on the edit screen and a path will be created when you right click the screen.
The third option is a combination of the previous two. Place four points on the screen. Now go to each side and in the middle of the segment, place another point. Drag each of these new points in toward the title. After you have made all of the adjustments, right click on the edit screen to activate the path. Now scrub this clip. Turn off the visibility to this track and turn on the next title track. To draw a circular path, select the Create Ellipse Path option from the drop down menu. Bring your cursor to the edit screen and while depressing the control key, drag the cursor to create your circle. Trust me, you might have to practice this a few times to get it into the right position. Once you have your circle in position, right click the edit screen to activate the path. Grab the cursor and scrub the path. Turn off the visibility to this clip and then turn on the last title's visibility. These have all been 2D examples, so let's do a 3D move. I'm going to use the ellipse tool and create an elliptical path around the globe. To do this, we have to change our viewing perspective. Go to the upper right hand corner of the edit screen and click the button that says Perspective View. And from the drop down, select Top View. Once you change your perspective, you will notice that the globe and title have changed into flat lines on the grid. Don't worry, this is normal. To make drawing the path easier, left click in the gray area surrounding the edit screen. And while holding the control key down, use your mouse wheel to change the size of the edit screen. This will make it easier to both draw and adjust the ellipse. Take note that changing the panel size has deselected the title. So go to the Timeline panel and reselect the last title track before selecting the Create Ellipse Path option. Starting from the upper left hand corner of the edit screen, drag the cursor across the screen. The final placement will have the frame for the ellipse resting on the edges of the edit screen. Hopefully, everyone saw the white line radiating from the center of the circle and ellipse paths. At the end of the white line is a red dot that connects to the proposed path. The white line's position sets the object's starting point, and the red dot, when moved with the mouse, will set the object's path direction. Now right-click to activate the path. To make it look as if the title is going far behind the globe, extend that part of the path out. It's okay if the path goes outside of the edit screen dimensions. Change the perspective view to front, resize the edit screen, and scrub your clip. Press F9 or click the blue button to return to graphic editing mode. Now that the path is finished, what do you do if you need the object to spin in a different direction? To change the direction of the rotation, the path must be showing. So if you are in graphic editing mode, press F10 or the button at the bottom right of the edit screen. This will open effect editing mode again. The object that is rotating will have a plus symbol within a circle attached to the path. 
right click on this and a panel will open. From this panel, select the Invert All Translate Keyframe option. You can change the direction at any point on the path. If you change the rotation at the starting point, you will not see anything change until you play the clip. Press F9 or the blue editing mode button to return to graphic editing mode. Scrub your clip one last time. In previous versions of VizTitle, this procedure was much more time consuming. Here is an example of the difference on a simple path. The old method is on the left, and the new method is on the right. You can see the new feature is playing the clip before the old method can finish creating the path. Just imagine the time savings on a large project. As you can see, this welcome new feature is a big time saver. If you like animating your titles, this is a very simple way to achieve a polished product without spending all day animating.